Today, I want to talk about going beyond traditional therapy. And what I mean by that is going beyond what normal, normal standard therapy goes into. And I know there's some of you out there that have experienced or actually practiced something beyond the, the normal therapy that people usually get. Maybe you're a really um, a different therapist that you decide to do different things than what you're taught and move outside the box of standard therapy. And I really appreciate that. My experience with um, therapy was with a practitioner or a therapist that was really sweet and very soft-spoken and easy to talk to and engaging and very much about our feelings. And it was great. The thing that was a little frustrating to me is the woman that I was with um, and experienced sexual abuse since you know, in her childhood. And there was still no healing or integration from that abuse. And she was still having to deal with it every single day. And I know that's, that is a possibility for a lot of people, but I've also seen people go beyond normal therapy and heal what's happened to them in their childhood in a, on a much deeper level. And I, I feel like that that therapy that we were in couldn't really go there. And it was uh, very much about um, uh, getting her to talk about the things and uh, getting into the, the, her emotions because she was kind of shut down. Um, but then I, when I asked her how long she'd been going to this therapist, it was something like nine or 10 years. And she was still kind of in a, in a PTSD or a traumatic state. She was functional in the world, but there was still um, this blockage around her. And uh, I just thought about that and said it was, it felt really good until the next time and then it would feel really good, but there never seemed to be much progress be behind that or beyond that. And I know that I've also um, heard the same kind of stories from people that I've been in front of um, and other people have been in front of. And they say, I've been doing five to 15 years of therapy and I've never gotten to what I've gotten to today. And I believe part of it is because the box that therapists are put in from their own education and their license only allows them to talk about certain things. And other things are sort of off limits. And also maybe they don't know um, some of the concepts that um, people that are outside normal therapy can talk about. And that's why I tend to also get therapists as my clients because when there's you know, everybody needs to work on their stuff. And then the other part is sort of expanding their scope of content and what, they're, what they can talk about and getting um, uh, a deeper reach at the, on their client than they had before. So this is what I want to talk about is like, for example, uh, I was with a couple of guys that were in, uh, in a relationship and um, one had um, PTSD from some trauma in this past and the other guy, not so much, but they both had their certain uh, emotional blockages. And they both had done a lot of drugs in the past, and that's how they coped with their emotions. Um, so as we got to talk, you know, as usually happens, people start to talk about this person and what they did and what they said. And it's, and it's great to get those feelings out, you know, how it made you feel about that. And now we can start to look into that and, and you know, what are the triggers that cause upset in your relationship? But what usually happens is that people go so much into that and they're, they're wanting some kind of a tool or a solution or a better way to deal with these upsets. But I don't really work that way. So I, I help people deal a little bit, but then I take a, a very short amount of time on that because I really want to go into, okay, we really want to solve this and integrate this so this isn't something that you have to deal with. We're going to go somewhere that maybe no one has gone before and go into where this all comes from. What is the core belief that you have that causes this mind program to be run, which causes the upset in the relationship? So one of the things that came up recently in this, um, in this session with these guys is that the guy that was uh, a bit shut down and um, really much in his negative feelings about himself and his partner was trying to do his best to, you know, God, I just want to love this guy. I just want him to love me. And why can't we just 
um, have a happy life. And the other guy, guy, I would say guy number one that was in this negative uh, uh, emotions was just he, he really identified himself with the emotions and with the story. And I'm just, this is, this is what I am and this is what I'm doing. And you know, I'm just not very motivated. And there is some compassion for that. And there also, if there's any amount of um, empathy and compassion and understanding, I need to go into how can we solve this? How can we get into that we do make a little shift, ever so small or large, make a shift in this guy's life so that he can start to break out of the identification with the story that he's, that's been created. And it's kind of like um, we all, you know, we all do this sometimes. Where um, we have an idea about ourselves and there's a story, and um, when we're telling the story, or if something triggers us, we say, "Yeah, oh man, I gotta, I gotta stop doing that," or "Yeah, that, I, that's my, that's my trigger or something." But if there's no um, anything beyond that that can resolve that trigger, can resolve the, the core. Um, the core wound there, then it's just going to keep on coming up. But so he's so used to, you know, uh, this comes up and he has a trigger about it and he's, he's trying to understand it, but he's so much into the story that he can't break out of it. So my thing is to come in there and do something or say something to give him a direct experience of what, a true, what his true nature is. And several ways to do that. And one is breath work, one is sound healing, another one is meditation. And sometimes you can do a really short meditation of just being in the presence of your divine nature. So we can talk and talk and, and um, everything can make complete sense to this person, you know, the one that's completely in the story. But it's kind of like you could say the most magical, amazing truth and still the person so identified with that story and still in that traumatic state, it's it's kind of like I think of it like a, a wild animal that's been caged for so long and has been so accustomed to the cage, and now you've opened up the door and you're like, is it really safe to come out here? Is it really safe to have emotions? When I, am I really going to be supported here? So there needs to be some real um, unconditional love and non-judgment, and maybe even some um, relating some direct experience that you might have had. So what's really hard to do is to relate to somebody that's in this position when you don't have at least a little bit of direct experience with that. And that's what really helps is that, you know, thankfully I've had a pretty full life and I've had experience of joy and pain and suffering and trauma and all those things. So I can pull from that and I can lean into that. So I can lean into my own direct experiences, which is which really helps to um, affect change in that. So back to to, to get that, that kind of uh, pattern broken, I like to start with a little meditation that kind of um, walks the person through what is it that's really true. So I think what I walked him through was, um, you know, there's this feeling of depression and sadness and um, maybe even some anger or distrust. Whatever the emotion is, there's always the awareness of that emotion. So, you know, it kind of comes out of my mouth. So I'm kind of pulling back at myself right now and I'm trying to figure out how I say this. But it's about um, noticing that there is always the awareness of whatever the emotion is. And in that, there's this clue that there's this awareness. Where does that awareness come from? What's that about? So I have this emotion, my mind or my thoughts have it in my body, there's feelings and I have emotion. How are they known? How are my feelings and my emotions? When I have anger, how is that anger known? So we put a word to this, and the word is awareness, or even expanded, it's called conscious awareness. What is that? Well, it's not really a, a thing that you can quantify to me. You can't really put it in a box. And that, that's why it's so elusive. But the more that, that we talk about this and we start to engage in this conversation, that we start to pull away from uh, just being of the mind and its beliefs and its thoughts into this place of awareness. Wow, I'm aware that I'm attached to my story. I'm aware that there's this belief and there's a story 
and I'm very, I can be aware that I'm resistant to hearing something or pulling away from this. It's kind of like you're really wrapped up into this and you're aware of that you're wrapped up into it. But little by little, that can soften and the resistance starts to soften and it's, it's like you start taking a little step and a little step and you're not in the same place that you were before. So this is kind of how I work with people is that I want to go into at least a place of awareness of who they really are, for one, and awareness of this identification with the story and the beliefs and all the patterns that um, they have taken for granted all this time. And then we can go into, okay, if there's an awareness about that, now where might have this whole belief have started? If there's um, a feeling that you are not motivated in life and you feel like you're just in a depression, what is the feeling behind that? That you're not, you don't have permission to be angry or whatever the thing is, where did that come from? Where did this start? Well, it started a month ago. No, it didn't really start a month ago because this is always a trigger back into the childhood. So that's where I like to go, is to go back into the, the deeper realms of the childhood and say, okay, what was the what was the scene like? And what were the emotions that you were feeling? So invariably, whatever's been happening in the adult life tracks right down into the childhood. Now you can kind of so the emotion that's happening in the adult life and pair it up with the emotion that was happening in the childhood. Now you can get to some healing and integration. And this doesn't need to be a five, 10 year, 15 year process. If done correctly, if done with compassion, empathy, some uh, sharing of direct experience and really going into it. Because um, what people are normally used to is they're used to just kind of taste those things. Oh yes, you have these, these feelings of these, you know, inadequacy or self-worth or something well let's work with that and then you know let's, let's talk about this and how does this make you feel and it's and it's great stuff for the surface and you can see how it doesn't really get down to the thing it just it lets it all be and continue to be and i like going down into it and say okay what can we recreate ourselves into be and use this as so this this is the part that um is really, I feel really different is that we start to, I start getting into, there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're in this body because you are perfect, because there's a perfect experience that's happening right now. And part of that perfection is this pain and suffering and this knowing of how this feels so you can have compassion and empathy for other people that feel the same way. But that's not meant to be your whole life story. For a lot of people it is, but for you, because you're in front of me, you're meant to flip that around and start to shift your life and transform your life into something that a very small percentage of people actually get into. But for you, it's apparent that it's, it's right here for you. Otherwise you wouldn't be in front of me. So that's the same thing that I can relate to about how it happened with me. I was in guilt and obligation and feeling insignificant, and unappreciated, and unacknowledged. And it would just kept on going down that road. And I thought, this is just how I feel. And I cope with it in certain ways. And but that's not where the, the whole journey ended. I needed to, to stop at that corner of that building. And instead of looking straight, I needed to peek around the corner and realize that there's something else going on here. There's something else that's going to be created that is totally different than how I know my life to be. And that's where, that's where I like going. <clears throat> <clears throat> so as people start to um, get into this um, sort of bickering back and forth, I let that I let that happen for a little bit, just to kind of get the emotions out and saying, you know, as these people can kind of when they start getting to, it makes me feel something. You make me feel something, even if they say you make me feel. At least they're coming out with the emotions of how they're feeling, because a lot of people. Like, so this guy, this, this, this say guy number two, um, he's used to taking care of everyone and being the caretaker and uh, giving himself, but not really um, being so much in touch with his emotions. So what does he do? He attracts a guy that's completely emotional. So guy number two sees guy number one as this is someone that I need to take care of, I need to fix, I need to caretake for, and he's got this problem. So in reality, guy number one is helping guy number two to come back to himself. 
So this is not something that you usually hear in normal therapy because it's kind of a like a spiritual metaphysical theory, but I've seen it to be proven true in so many cases that we attract people in a life that help us to expand and help us to grow um, as a soul. So here's a guy that's that's showing up to him and said, you know, I'm I've got all I've got these problems and I've got this this trauma and I'm in depression. And here's this guy number two going, I just want you to love me. I just want you to love me. Well, the question goes back to guy number two. How come you don't love yourself? Because guy, this guy number one may seem like he has all the problems, but you attracted him. Why did you attract someone that isn't, a, isn't able to love you? What is it about you that you're not able to love yourself? I know that it's kind of a, you might call it some tough love or kind of harsh, but it really kind of needs to break open that and um, get into something deeper into the reality of what's really going on. You know, normal stuff just kind of works on the surface, but the questions need to be asked. If you're such, if you're a creator of your life, if you attract like vibration in consciousness, and you've attracted this, and you find it really hard to love this or for him to love you, what is it about your consciousness and your beliefs and your inner vibration that has attracted that? And why is it just so frustrated? So now if you go into uh, everything is ours to have, if we'll only allow it, if we kind of break ourselves open from all the layers that we've laid on top of ourselves, we find that we have everything that we need. But what we've done is we've layered on still on top of ourselves our inner light of these beliefs and ideas and thoughts and mind programs. So the question has to become, what is inside of me that is in this invisible resistance to what is it that is already there for me? Let me say this a different way. Inside of us, there's this resistance to love. Otherwise, we would have everything, experience everything as pure love. But inside of us, there's these ideas that I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, I'm not lovable, or whatever the thing is. And any time that we're trying to get something and it's frustrating, we can't get it, it's not because of outside. It's not because outside isn't trying its hardest to give it to us. It's not because God isn't giving it to us. It's not because... Uh, this person can't give us love. It's because our channel is not open completely. And I challenge you, even if you're, you, you believe your channels to be open, open them more. What if you open your channels even more for love? And if you have anything in your life that is not feeling in alignment, are your channels open for love? And what if they were? How would that change things? And that was the question for I had for the guys is, you know, what if your channel is open? Here it is, you're, you're struggling, you have, you know, issues in your relationship. And if you were to continue on this path, it doesn't, doesn't look great. But what if you change things right now? What if you completely allowed yourself to love yourself in all ways more than anything or anyone? Wow, just imagine what would change there, what, how your life would change. In fact, it would change every aspect of your life. It would change your health. It would change your career, it would change your finances, would, and of course it would change your relationship. So um, I think that's the, the main piece that um, is kind of outside normal therapy. And there's more, but that's, that's one of the major ones is that everything is ours to have. Everything is ours to have and everything is ours to receive. And if we're not receiving it, then there's some kind of blockage there. And of course, there's a lot of other things in play there that are outside of the trauma that I've experienced or the beliefs that I've had. You know, there's all kinds of different factors, seen and unseen. But if we could focus, if we could put a little energy into what I've been talking about, about this idea, that's one that can make a huge difference in our life. And the other thing, of course, is things like astrology and when you were born and what's in your chart and you know, all those things. I find that very helpful stuff to know that there are certain <clears throat> patterns and rhythms in life. And sometimes it's 
we're not in the right rhythm to to receive what it is that we want but that can't be the reason for everything so it's it kind of plays into that but it's not the reason for everything just like what i'm talking about isn't the reason for everything so it's a really powerful one so i hope that's helped you and if you want any more insight into this or want to do some more self-discovery uh, with me give me a call contact me and i love what i do i love being a part of this um, life transformation i love you thank you have a beautiful day bless you